What's up guys, B-Rob here, and today is part two of the five tips for better emotional health series or the emotional health series. I will be right back. All right, so here we are, five more tips for better emotional health. Like I just said in the bumper, this is part of the emotional health series, which is a blog series at leanwellonline.com but also a video series here at This Is B-Rob, the YouTube channel. And so thank you for tuning in. So last time um, with the part one, it dealt a lot more with environmental things, getting out there. And if you haven't seen it, I want to invite you to go. It's going to pop up like right here. Go right there and go look at part one and then come back here and pick up with us at part two. All right. But this time what I'm going to do today is we're going to deal more with our internal connections and it's going to have a lot to do with how we are handling things on the inside and how we could we can implement these tips and get better results from in, internally, which will lead to better emotional health. And then we'll start seeing more positive things in our lives. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and get into it. So the first one, number one, is you have to get rid of those negative thoughts. And I know this sounds super simple to say and a lot harder to do when you're when you're flooded with these negative thoughts. But here, check this out. One of the things that we have to really focus on is we got to try to make sure that whenever we are focusing on negative thoughts, that we switch our minds over and start looking for the positive, right? So that means that even if we have to get ourselves away from around those negative people or those negative things that fill our head with those negative thoughts, whether it's movies and music or people, whatever it is, books, whatever, uh, different YouTube channels, news, whatever, get away from it so that you can focus on training your brain to see more of the positive, then maybe you can introduce things that you, you might need, like you may need news and things like that. I don't know. But what I'm saying is make sure that you definitely focus on, on getting rid of things, the negative things, so you can, you can focus on more positive things and you will see more positive in your life. It's crazy how it works, but trust me, it does work. Now, the next four things, that's tip number one. The next four things will play into this tip. So just keep that in mind as we're going on and on with the next tips is that they all play back into getting rid of this negative, negative thinking. So let's go ahead to tip number two. So tip number two is you want to practice self-discipline. And so I know like practicing developing self-discipline is difficult. And if you think that you're not alone. A lot of people think that, I mean, it's, it's true. It's, it can be difficult to bring in those habits that, that will uh, allow you to have good self-discipline. But I will say this, it's important to know and remember that discipline is one of the most important values that you could ever develop for yourself. All right. And without self-discipline, you won't be able to control yourself, which means you increase your chances of of losing control and doing something you're probably going to regret. And guess what? That leads to negative situations, regret, which leads to negative thinking, right? And we're trying to get away from that negative thinking. So having regret and loss, uh, disorder, all these things will cause you to have an unhealthy emotional state. All right. So we want to practice self-discipline. We've got to figure out how to make that happen. That's number two. So number three is you want to make imperfection great. So what, is I, what do I mean by that is, you know, we have a tendency to be perfectionist uh, in certain areas of our life, if not all areas of our life. So what happens is when something can't be perfect, then we just basically feel like that we're big losers, right? Because it can't be perfect, so why do it? But the, but the thing is, is that we're all human and we all make mistakes. That's everybody. Trust me, everybody makes mistakes. And so we have to remember that imperfection is part of being human. So what we do instead is we need to look at what the positives that can come from our imperfections, right? So once we know what our imperfections are, what our weaknesses are, and we come to terms with this is an imperfection in my life, now what can I do to create a positive in that space? So that might mean if I have a weakness of something in my business and I, like, I can't do these certain things, so I might hire somebody in that will do those things that I can't do, but, but I've come to terms with the things I can't do, right? So, or if I can't um, draw or something like that, well, maybe I'll go take some, some lessons or I can't sing. I'll go take some lessons and get better at it. But 
if I don't come to terms with it and realize, you know what, I can't do this, but how can I make it positive? Then I won't, I won't, I won't ever do it. It won't ever be a positive thing. It'll be an imperfection. And I'll feel like that. Well, you know, I'm not perfect. So why do anything? And it goes back to number one, negative thinking, right? All right. So let's get into to number four. Number four is we got to let go of the all of nothing attitude. Now, this one kind of goes with number three. It can when you talk about perfectionism. But this all of nothing attitude is basically like when you can't like when you don't reach, when you don't uh, do something, then that means all of it is bad. So basically, it's like this. I used to have this happen to me where I have my goals laid out. And if I didn't make a goal from last week, then oh, why do any of it? Right. Because I didn't meet the goal. So the whole plan that I had in, in mind is thrown out the window. No, let's not. No, you shouldn't do that. Right. Just because I didn't reach that goal means that. All right. I mean, maybe I need to figure out why I didn't reach it and then work on that. But it's not an all of nothing attitude where, well, this one mistake means that everything needs to be thrown away. So we got to get rid of that all of nothing attitude because it goes back to like imperfection. Uh, we are all human. We're all going to make mistakes. We're not going to do everything. We're going to burn a brownie, right? So we're going to burn a pan of brownies. Doesn't mean we don't make brownies anymore. Okay. So uh, we got to lose that all of nothing attitude. So number five and the last tip here is don't jump to negative conclusions. And here's something that I see a lot of people do. I am guilty of it sometimes myself, and I'm trying my best to work on it. But basically jumping to negative conclusions can show up in many different ways. So one way that this shows up is that basically you automatically assume the worst of a particular situation or, or the intentions of a person, right? So you're like, well, you know, this person's probably already, they're going to be this type of person or uh, me going over here to, when I go to the store, it's probably going to be crowded. So, you know, so, uh, but basically what happens is, it may not be. And so you've already set the stage for something negative and now you're reacting to that something negative and it's probably going to cause you to have some negative thinking, right? So it goes back to tip number one. But what we need to do is not always jump to neg negative conclusions and think the worst. Let's try to think the positive. And I'm not saying set yourself up to be let down, but what what do you gain by thinking negative and jumping to negative conclusions, right? So you don't buy yourself anything. You add more stress on your plate, stress that you don't need, and you're damaging your emotional health. All right. So those are the five tips for this part two of uh, better emotional health. So hopefully these tips help you. If you are watching this video and about to read the blog at leanwellline.com, please click that little heart. You got to like, boom, click down on it like that. Click that little heart button that tells us that you like the blog. It, and that you support it and it and tells us that you read it. So appreciate you doing that. If you're watching this video from uh, This Is B-Rock YouTube channel, please like, share, subscribe, comment, and thank you for tuning in. I'll be right back with part three, so stay tuned for that. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate every single one of you. This is B-Rock.